In case you guys haven't seen the news, Logan Paul is just about to release a documentary about the Flat Earth Society. My name is Logan Paul and I... I think I'm coming out of the flat earth closet. So I'm going to debunk their most popular sets of evidence and tell you guys how you can beat a flat earther in an argument. I started out this video by scrolling through the Flat Earth Society's website and having a read of their wiki page to see what their arguments are, what the evidence is for those arguments and why they so fervently believe that the earth isn't round. And after a little bit of research, I've been able to summarize their arguments down to essentially one point. And that's that they believe the earth being round is a huge global conspiracy. Essentially, they believe that the 533 people who have been into Earth's orbit are liars, and that all of the photographs that have been taken from space are doctored and fake. And unless you're Chris Hadfield or have your own spaceship to take them up into orbit yourself, you're not going to have the authority to argue with them on that point. The one thing you can argue against though is the Flat Earther's proofs for why the Earth is flat. There are three key experiments in the Flat Earther canon that are used to disprove the Earth being a globe or a sphere. Relative to the number of testimonies and experiments that prove the Earth to be a sphere, quite a small number. But regardless, we are going to take a look at them, see how much merit they hold, and disprove them using real science. The first and most famous experiment is often called the Bedford Canal Experiment, which was described in the book Earth Not a Globe, which was published in 1865 by Samuel Burley Rowbotham a book whose title took about as long to come up with as it did to be peer-reviewed. The experiment involved placing seven flags, each five feet tall, one mile apart from each other along the Bedford Canal in Norfolk. The seventh flag was called Point D, and right next to it was an eight-foot tall flagpole with a three-foot squared flag at the top of it. And this three-foot square flag was aligned with the seventh flag in such a way that the top of the seventh and the bottom of the eighth were flush and aligned perfectly with each other. Rowbotham, who penned the work under the nom de plume Parallax, the last forgotten transformer, witnessed that when looking through a good telescope, the tops of the flags aligned perfectly with each other. And as a result of this, he could assume that because the ground was parallel to the flags, the earth was flat. Easy, simple, and an undeniable fact, right? The first experiment was carried out by Parallax in 1838. However, 32 years later, a scientist famed for developing the theory of evolution by natural selection independently of Charles Darwin went up to Norfolk to have a look at what was actually going on. Alfred Russell Wallace adjusted the experiment to compensate for a phenomenon known as atmospheric refraction, a phenomenon which causes light to bend as it travels through the air because the density of air decreases as you get higher above above the Earth. Alpha found that adjusting for atmospheric refraction, the findings of the experiment actually proved the Earth to be round. And not just that, it proved that Earth was the exact size that it should be. After Rowbotham and Wallace, plenty of people went up to the Bedford Canal to reproduce the famous canal experiments. And most notably, one Lady Anne Blount, the founder of the Flat Earth Society as we know it today, went up there recreated the experiment and published a photograph in 1905 to try and prove Parallax's findings. During her experiment, she didn't adjust for atmospheric refraction and as a result of that, the flags did appear to be flat. But at the end of the day, regardless of whether she blatantly ignored Wallace's findings, as all of the greatest, most prolific flat earthers know, all photographs are fake, right? So that's the first and most important experiment debunked. Yay, we won! <laughs> or we didn't because there's two more to go. The second experiment is known as the Bishop Experiment and took place in my favorite place in the world, Monterey Bay in California. But we're not gonna be looking at the awesome animals there. Instead, we're going to be looking out across 23.28 miles of glorious, gorgeous ocean from Lover's Point to Lighthouse State Beach. The Bishop Experiment involved one person lying down 20 inches above sea level at Lover's Point and placed a telescope to their eye looked over to the lighthouse. The individual claimed to be able to see children playing on the other beach 23 miles away. At a distance such as this, it would be expected that due to the Earth's curvature, the beach on the other side of the bay would be 352 feet under the horizon. You shouldn't be able to see the children if the Earth is a globe. Checkmate science, video's over. But wait, what kind of day was it when the experiment was performed? Was it, perchance, slightly chilly out. 
When it's cold, air is far more dense, resulting in a far more intense form of refraction called looming. And it's this intense refraction which allows us to see beyond the horizon. It's also what produces variable horizons. What I mean by this is how far away the horizon appears to be. On a day when the weather is slightly warmer, the horizon will appear a lot closer. And on a day when the air is far cooler, the horizon appears a lot further away. Because of the chilly weather during the experiment, the light on the other side of the horizon was refracted over the highest point on the curve between the two beaches, resulting in the observer being able to see it. So, we're sitting pretty. Two out of three easily explained by the process of refraction. What can the flat earthers possibly throw at us next? The final piece of evidence seeks to debunk one of the most fundamentally important experiments ever carried out to prove the earth was round. Millennia ago, a chap you've probably never heard of who's not especially famous called Aristotle noticed that as boats were sailing away from him, they appeared to sink. As they reached the horizon, the whole of the ship would slowly disappear, followed by the deck and then the masts, until nothing remained. This effect is neatly known as the sinking ship effect and is one of the few ways that a human standing on the land can witness the rotundity of the earth. And as a result of that, it set the wheels in motion for discovering more evidence for the curvature of the earth. The Flat Earth Society argues that this effect does not happen because of the curvature of the earth due to it being inconsistent. It occurs to different extents at different times of the day. And they would argue this process actually occurs because refraction can cause light to bend more or less as it increases or decreases. The thing is, they've just answered why this process is inconsistent themselves. The density of air changes with temperature which fluctuates throughout the day. It's cooler in the early morning and the evening than it is in the middle of the day, which is inevitably going to alter the amount of refraction which occurs, and therefore the extent to which you will see the effect. As a result of that, whether or not the sinking ship effect occurs at certain times of the day is purely dependent on how far away the ship is and how much refraction is occurring. It's pretty simple, right? The Flat Earth Society's take on all round Earth evidence is a fantastic example of something called epistemic contextualism. A horrendously big word, an even more horrendous philosophical premise, but unfortunately, the crux of everything when it comes down to Flat Earthers. Basically, what this means is knowledge is not absolute and doesn't always exist. Knowledge is purely dependent on the situation that you are in at a given time. If someone throws a skeptical situation at you, for example, climate change isn't anthropogenic, or that the Earth is flat, in their worldview it automatically invalidates anything you have to say. For example, no it's not, the Earth is round, is factually incorrect. The only way to argue with this is to actually provide someone with hard science and real evidence. You go back to the root of your knowledge, which now is hopefully something you can do. But if you can't, then re-watch the video like a couple more times, maybe share it with a friend, like and subscribe, and see where I get to. Anyway, I've been Sam, and I'll see you guys next time.